And Vincenza, I am super excited about this next guest. Um, look, from from Philly, is it what, what part of Philly? North Philly. From North Philly <laughs> to the boardroom to the to giving back to the community, we have the one and only the hip hop amazing artist Dice Raw in the building. Dice, how are you doing? Man, I'm fantastic. Ivan, thanks for having me. And Vincenza, it's a pleasure oh. to be with you as well. Of course. And DETV, shout out Wilmington. So, so we, we want to, first of all, let's start letting people know who the heck is Dice Raw, because oh. I know who Dice is. Right, right. I mean, Dice Raw, writer, you know, uh, producer, uh, vocalist, singer, actor, you know, theater <laughs> producer. Super creator. Right, you right. know, CEO of Freedom Theater. So it's, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. And Richard, I have to say, look, so Dice and I, we met, we were busting it up at, at La Cave, and um, he's like, and the great thing is, I really, I knew of his music. I just never knew who he was. Right. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a songwriter. I'm like, all right, so what you write? And he was like, I wrote, you ever heard the fire? I'm like, Wait a minute, but Roots? And he was like, yeah. I said, bro, and I like damn near went in tears, right? Because I'm like, yo, that song saved my life. Right. It gave me the inspiration that I needed to get out of the bed and to get my life back together. Wow. And I would listen to it every day. What are the odds? Uh, right. <laughs> that, the, that, was, that was a sign. Yeah. Well, so my, the, the, well, one of our friends, Leroy Tice, introduced us, and I was like, oh, you work with the Roots? I was like, yeah. And uh, he's like, he's like, the fire is my favorite song. I was like, well, I wrote that, you know. Oh, and it's crazy it because um, <laughs> uh, when we were first working on it, it was originally not even going to be a root song. It was going to be the theme for the Olympics, and it still wound up being the theme for the Olympics. I feel like that's still kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, for 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 that year, whatever, well, you know, right. um, two thousand, whatever that was, you know, mm -hmm. ten or something like that. Um, so we were working on something for the Olympics, and. Uh, and and they just you know thought killed it so hard and then when John jumped on it it was just became his own life you know yeah. what I mean so, yeah that hook is amazing yeah it's crazy that hook yeah. is crazy yeah. but but outside of that um, right. Freedom Theater man you're the CEO of, of Freedom right, Theater let's right. talk about that I mean Freedom Theater uh, started in 1966 you know John Allen Bob mm -hmm. Leslie I mean black art black theater at that time was at its infant stage you right. know what I mean. Um, uh, I mean, even theater, American theater and American musical was still kind of like finding its way a little bit. So black theater was something that was just like, oh, wow. OK, mm -hmm. very uh, avant-garde right. and uh, very left to center um, and very eclectic. Mm -hmm. And for those guys to, to, to have the foresight that black art and black theater will grow to where it is now, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. And, uh, and I'm happy to be there, it's, and it's exciting, you know, because mm -hmm. I was actually a student at Freedom Theater, and Freedom Theater, y'all know y'all threw me out as a kid, <laughs> and you told me I couldn't be in a performance, and you <laughs> broke my heart, but you welcomed me back. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back at Freedom Theater, surprisingly, you know. As CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CEO. So you, so you know? get the boot, and you come, they, they Steve Jobs you. you, you, you kind of, kind of, yeah. So, so what can we expect, you know, moving forward, because I know um, Freedom Theater has been dormant for a little bit. Right, but but you're rebuilding. Mm -hmm. You and your and your team are rebuilding. What can we expect for the future? Oh man, uh, well first, education. You mm -hmm. know, is huge. You right. know, and um, that's something that I think Freedom Theater definitely wants to focus on. And that, and like our partnerships that we've been creating have been very centered in education and reaching back into the community um, to put more uh, arts and more in giving kids of color you know, Latino, black, and even poor white, giving them access to theater, you know, mm -hmm. things that they would ordinarily wouldn't have access to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, you know, internships. Uh, and then first things first, you know, we, we got a big surprise too at Freedom. Um, you know, we, we're in the process of a huge revitalization project. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm excited to announce that, but I, I'm not gonna get too much into that yet, cause right. we'll do that big. We'll do that, yeah, 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 we'll do that, that later, big, right, right, right. right. And, uh, and then, you know, more digital content, you know, Freedom Theater is excited to partner with, you know, a, a great partner that we're, we're about to, you know, sign a contract with and do something big with him. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's a big right. fella, you know what I'm saying? So we're excited about that. Don't want to get too much into that either, but, um, but then, you know, we have new shows too. So we have uh, the Forgotten Founding Fathers, which is a new program that we just produced. And it's going to be going up at Venice Island Performing Arts Center, nice. November 14th, 15th, and 16th. So that's like the, the, the first thing that the community be able to engage with. And it's daytime performances. And, you know, we've already partnered with 
tons of schools in Philadelphia and, you know, different programs that are bringing different mm -hmm. schools there. So mm -hmm. it's going to be very exciting. And like I said, we're giving kids access and exposure to arts and performing arts that they typically wouldn't get a chance to see. And, and with a story they typically never even heard of. There you go. There yeah. you go. So is it, can I call you Dice? Yeah, is that all right? my name okay. is Carl, but my friends call me Dice. Can that's I, what I always. Can I, that's the name of the album. Yes, can, can I call I, you Dice? Yeah. Oh, please, <laughs> can I call please. You dice? Uh, dice, I know that um, some of our viewers may not know where the Freedom Theater is located. Where is it located, and um, what state? Okay, well, the Freedom Theater is located in the heart of North Philadelphia, mm -hmm. 1346 North Broad Street, and uh, 19123. If you want to send us a letter or even send us a donation. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> yes, yes, you're accepting all the above, all the above. Of course. Now, what what inspired you to? I, I'm going to go back. Go ahead, go ahead. We're going back a little go bit. Ahead, let's pick it Dice, back. what inspired you to dive into music? Oh, that's a good question. Well, my mom was a huge, you know, uh, record collector. Okay. So, I mean, in our house, we had nothing but records, and she would be playing like you know, Butterball on Sundays, mm. you know, I mean, even Frank Sinatra in the house. And, and my mom had a very eclectic music taste. So whereas though I would go outside and listen to hip hop with my mm. friends and get exposed to that inside my house, my mom was listening to like Kenny G was like her favorite artist at one point. She was like obsessed with Kenny G for some reason. And, um, and then my dad was a drummer. You know what I mean? So, you know, my first instrument was the drum. And back in school, back, back in uh, the, the 80s when I went to school, you could take home an instrument every day. Yeah. So I started taking home the violin, taking home the saxophone. You know, I played the French horn was like the thing that I was kind of like in love with, you know, and it was just because of how the French horn looked and the aesthetic of it. But then I was getting bullied on a train going to school because we was latchkey kids, you know what I mean? Right. Like. Kids today, y'all get treated a whole different. Your parents <laughs> take you to school. They uh, pick my, like I hear my friends talking about kids and like, oh, I just dropped my son off at school. I'm picking him. I'm like, damn, really? I'm like, <laughs> I had to catch scepter. You right. know what I mean? I'm on public transportation. So the kids would take the French horn because it had wheels and would just take it from me and be rolling it up and down the aisle. So oh. I had to figure out a way to still make music that gave me a little bit of street credibility. And, you know, I was like, you know, I can rap. And someone was like, no, you can't. And I was like, I just started just rapping off the top of my head. And then people liked it. Right. And I liked the attention from it. So that's really what got me into to rapping. You know? Wow. So. Mm. I'm, amazing artist, amazing. Thank um, yes. so, so let's talk about, if you don't mind, um, some of your accomplishments, some of the okay. things people know you of. The, okay. the Jimmy right. Fallon. Right, um, theme song. Theme song for yeah. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Late Night Fallon. So awesome. Yeah. Thank the, you. The, the, you said the Olympics. Right, um, right. What, yeah. what else happened? I mean, work with so many, like, I mean, just working with The Roots has just been, like, the gift that just keeps on giving, you know? Because when you're an underground rapper in the 90s and, you know, not making a lot of money from it, you signed to this record label, it's a major mm -hmm. company, and, mm -hmm. you know, your dreams almost feel like they're, they're, they're getting away from you or it's not all it's cracked up to be. Mm -hmm. And really, when I think back on those times, those were good times too. Right. You know, right. that we thought we were struggling and yes. that actually built the platform for what we're doing now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like, and I know y'all put former vocalists of the Roots, but no, I'm Roots for life. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And, um, and we got new stuff coming to us going to just knock people out of their out of their socks but i'm not gonna get into that either that, that's another that's another another <laughs> yeah. special right, right it looks like we're you're going to be coming back on the show to make all these oh. big announcements right well they're, 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 they'll be dropped they're, they're not they are big announcements yeah. and, and <laughs> we're excited everything. and we're excited to announce them you know what i mean yeah. so Very exciting. Well, but but i was never actually in the roots either right. so i was always just a writer producer mm -hmm. and guest vocalist you know what i mean so i was you're never, still a roots you still you're the roots crew for life roots, roots yeah crew for, for life. life you know and you know, but but like you were saying, like some of the accomplishments, um, uh, you know, working with the NFL for years, working mm -hmm. with the NBA for years, doing the NBA thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, champions. When the first time the uh, the Cavs met, um, LeBron. Well, no, uh, when LeBron was still on the Cavs, but when they met Golden State. Golden State. Yeah. Right. Was, you know, the right. all champions. I mean, so. I mean, all those different things are, are great moments. You know, right. the, the, the Woodstock, you know, right. performing at Woodstock when they would set the place on fire. And mm -hmm. I mean, they're not even just accomplishments, but just moments. Moments. That are just, you know, I mean, 
sometimes the moment is even better than the accomplishment. You know the what journey. I mean? The journey, the like journey. you were saying earlier. Sometimes, you know, and that's something that I, 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 I feel blessed enough to always be able to recognize. And and then, um, I mean, just as far as accomplishments, being the CEO of Freedom Theater is major. You know, yeah. to go yes. from hip hop, you know, profit, for profit, 100% to okay, nonprofit, oh wait, how does this work? And then still being able to, you know, maneuver in that world and, and you know, come up with something successful at the end. It's, there you it's, go. it's always a blessing, you know what yeah. I mean? So many accomplishments, so many hard to even name, you know what I mean? Right. So. But to be proud of. Oh, super and, proud and of. And yeah. I will say this because I know it's sometimes hard to speak about your own personal accomplishments because the moment Dice walked in, very humble, mm -hmm. I mean, very, very like personable, right away first impression, you know, meeting you. And you, you made me feel like I, you know, I was, I was the only one in the room right away. And it was like, huh, this per now hearing all these accomplishments, you're, you're a big deal. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you for that. <laughs> very accomplished and very, you know, successful. Um, but I, you know, very humble at the same time. Thank you, um, I appreciate that. But you know, I just always look at it like, um, it's not me that's even doing it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like, you know, where do these song ideas come from? You know, where where does all these blessings come from? It's coming from somebody above. And you know, and I'm just serve. I'm here to serve, right, you know? And right. now I'm serving a community. So, yeah, yeah. and that's what Freedom Theater is all about. Yeah. How many, how many um, instruments do you play? Oh, uh, I don't play anything okay. now. I mean, of course, I'm a drummer at mm -hmm. heart because my dad was a drummer. That's my right. first instrument. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I I played a lots of instruments. How many have I gotten good at? <laughs> now, that's a different question. Right. Yeah. You're probably so. pretty good at a lot right, of them. Right. And you just, you could do. Yeah, you could <laughs> just you, kill a whole thing. Right, you, you hand an instrument, anything, you, have, you, know. you probably could figure it out yeah. compared to us. <laughs> we probably wouldn't know what to well, do. Well, the other thing is uh, uh, the beauty of art is you can create art, and as long as you like it, mm. Damn. it has value. So right. that's it. You know what I mean, as now going into being a CEO of a nonprofit, like you said, you was in the in the, in the for profit mm. um, sector, and now in the nonprofit sector, what are you looking? And you know, in the nonprofit, the job is to mm -hmm. change the world. Mm. Right, that's the job. Right, mm -hmm. right. What do you see for um, Freedom Theater? And your your um, not accomplishments, but your your you and your 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 team to change the world. What are you looking? To, how are you looking to change the world with well, with theater? I mean, that's a good question, and um, and I think every artist really should ask themselves that. But that's an intelligent question for starters, and not every artist is even that aware. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we can be too self-aware artists, mm -hmm. and I can get caught up in that as well. You know what I mean? Um, but again, with the power of God, you know, or whoever you, you know, pray to the universe, I don't want to even get into that, but, right. you know, um, being driven by a message that's bigger than myself mm -hmm. is kind of what I see for Freedom Theater, too. So, you know, for years, Freedom Theater was, uh, the mission statement was, you know, high level arts and kind of like doing what Yale Repertoire was doing, what you know, what Harvard was doing, like high, high level dance, high level mm -hmm. acting, high level production. And I still want to take that, but what I want to do is change it a little bit. And I want to chronicle African American history mm -hmm. through the performing arts, which I think makes it easier for kids and even adults for sometimes to learn about African American history, which is American history by itself, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to, to shed a spotlight on that. And I feel like that will do a ripple effect. Cause like when I came in earlier, we were talking about Box, right? Yeah. The story of Henry Box Brown, the same brother, Leroy Tice, you know, <laughs> shout out Tice, who introduced us, you know, he came to see the production a couple different times. And being somebody who is a lawyer, somebody who does hold a doctorate, you know, who, you know, has all these, you know, been on different boards, and then to hear a story about African American triumph at at 40 years old, 50 years old, 60, right. and something that you never heard of, you're like, well, wait, why didn't I ever hear this? You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and you just gotta, you know, it, when when teachers are teaching African American history in school, black teachers, white teachers, I mean, whoever, Asian teachers, like they. There's certain things that may be uncomfortable for them to talk about, um, especially when it comes down to whips and chains and the, the typical narrative that we know in slavery. 
but there's so many bright moments inside that horrible history that need to be showcased as well, like the heroism in it, you know, yeah. which is Harriet Tubman. But there's more Harriet Tubmans, right, you know, right. uh, the inventions that came out of slavery. When you think about, I mean, not just the cotton gin, but the doorknob, the hairbrush, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, traffic the room. Light. I mean, the, yeah. I mean, Gary Morgan made the traffic light, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, all, all these different things that are that are part of African American history that aren't showcased during a curriculum uh, that's a widespread curriculum in America, and that's something that I want to do, and I want to help teachers nationwide, you know what I'm right. saying? Which is why we created a streaming service to a Freedom Theater that you can actually stream our shows like Box, The Forgotten Founding Fathers, um, uh, The King of Love. You can stream these shows into schools and classrooms all around the country, all around the world, really, if you're and, interested in African American history. And these shows, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dice, these shows that they're creating, um, black history is in, in an edutainment hip hop form. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, not just hip hop, but, but like, right. um, like this show, Henry Box Brown Box um, is also gospel. Oh, you know, oh. yeah, there, there's folk music in it because um, Henry Box Brown was a singer as well. Okay. He was a magician. He was a singer. He was a hypnotist. Didn't know and, that. Yeah, see, and Didn't most people, most people who were in his area in Lewiston County uh, that knew his slave master who went under a, 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 a title of being uncommonly kind. Like he owned slaves, but they was like, well this guy, he doesn't really, he's too nice to right. his slaves. Like, this is weird. They thought that Henry Box Brown you know the had him hypnotized. I have not. Yeah. Oh wow. I had him okay. hypnotized. He, he, uh, um, <laughs> Henry Box Brown, he mailed himself, he got into a box and mailed himself to, to freedom. Oh, yeah. He mailed to, himself from Virginia to Philadelphia. To Philadelphia. And he became the first African American performance artist. Get out of here. I mean, he toured the world. Didn't know that. And he had a show called The Panorama, which he would go from Europe. I mean, this is a slave. He'd gone from, from slavery inside a box to touring the world. Tour, he toured Europe. He toured Canada. And, but he was also being tracked down by a bounty hunter. And we think that he may have, they may have caught him in uh, Canada, where he was last seen. Oh, before. wow. Performing at Panorama, so. Okay. But shout out Henry Box Brown. Maybe yeah. he's still out there. Right, right. Because he was magic. He was know? magic. He right. was a magical slave. I, you know. <laughs> where, where can people get more information mm -hmm. about um, Freedom, the, the new Freedom Theater? Right. Uh, freedomtheater.org. You know, just go there right now. You can log on, hit the button. You can watch shows in the black box. You can learn about the staff, learn about the board, and uh, learn about is everything that we got going on awesome. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a really nice website. I had the chance to scroll through it briefly and I was like, well, it was a great website, easy to navigate, and it right. does explain the history, the mission, and the background. So if they want, for viewers want to find out more information on the history. Or donate. Or donate. <laughs> or donate yeah. That's important. Yeah, Check the out button. the website, super, super important. But Dice, we ran out of time. Oh, I, would, I feel no. like we could talk to Dice all, yeah. all day. Yeah, okay. Lots of stories, um, <laughs> but lots of history and education. But thank you so much for joining us on Good Morning Wilmington and good luck. Thank you. Sir, and hopefully you continue to to grow and we uh, right. look forward to all the new and upcoming news that you'll be letting Ivan know, you know, let Ivan know and then maybe we can have you back on the show. Right. <laughs> no, 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 we, we will. Okay, oh, good, good. There you go. <laughs> we will. Wonderful. All right. All right. Guys, thank you so much, bro. Mm -hmm. Thank appreciate you guys. It. Appreciate it. All right. Um, matter of fact, you got, this is your camera. You can tell the community what you want about it. Okay. About freedom go theater. to freedom, go to newfreedomtheater.com.org, you know, and uh, learn about us, you know, so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot. What's up, everyone? It's your main man, Big Ive, the talk of the town, Mr. DETVCH.com, and I'm here with my wonderful and amazing co-host, Vincenza. <laughs> we just stopped by to tell you to be sure, if you want any information on what's going on in Wilmington and to meet some dynamic people doing some amazing and great things, be sure to watch us live on Good Morning Wilmington on Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Oh, Ivan, 10 a.m. Which he said, <laughs> 10 a.m. Listen to me. That's why he has me here. But yes, tune in live 10 a.m. Monday and Wednesday on Good Morning Wilmington. DETVCH.com.